Hey there, it is me, Aphex Colin, and I am bringing you a video for Fantasy Grounds Pathfinder 2nd Edition tutorial on how to actually get inside and start and get into a battle and play. Uh, and I'm going to give you everything that you need to know on getting started and uh, ba the basics of how Fantasy Gr uh, Grounds runs and how Pathfinder 2nd Edition is implemented within Fantasy Grounds. So the whole idea of this is give a, a tutorial since I didn't see too many tutorials out there. Uh, but there is a Fantasy Ground college night. I think those are on Saturdays or Sundays. You can actually go to the website and you could sign up for those. I believe it's on Discord. And uh, it's it's pretty much everything you need to know uh, how to run sessions. Uh, it gets into advanced uh, stuff. But I felt uh, the need to make a video for a lot of those people out there that really want to see uh, the second edition in action with Fantasy Grounds. And so kind of going... Um, into a little bit more detail like there are a lot of different uh virtual tabletops out there but i really feel that fantasy grounds has nailed what i want in a tabletop i've played a lot of other ones um not going to really name any names but there there are a lot of really good tabletops out there or virtual tabletops out there it just depends on really what suits your style i guess is the best way to put it you know uh like a mac versus windows you know kind of user so Whatever you really kind of like will fit your style. Go for it. Well, Fantasy Ground fits my style, so I'm going to go into all the detail and as much as I can get into, but today I want to keep it short, nice and simple, and make it so that you can get right into here if you're a new uh, beginner and you're really not sure what you're doing, especially with the second edition. There's so many questions, and I get it, so we're, I'm just going to nail all the basic um questions so that way uh, you can get right into a game and start playing as soon as possible now a lot of everything that i'm going to be showing you today can there's a lot of different ways to do other things uh and, and, and you'll see as as we get into the nitty grittiness of fantasy grounds but i did kind of want to start at the very beginning and i mean explain almost everything in detail so let's give this a shot now so just going to open up my fantasy grounds now i have unity and there's a classic mode uh i don't believe classic is supported anymore but it, it could be um but unity the, or, or they used to call it unity now this is just fantasy grounds this is the and the and uh this is what you get um and i think it's a subscription based unless you want to get ultimate which is a one-time fee and i highly suggest if you're a a dungeon master who, uh, you know, depending on on how much time you have, you can really get into details in here. But if you don't have that much time, you can kind of, you know, you can still have a good virtual tabletop, especially to, to get your players more interested and, and get them a little bit more involved with everything. So And, um, you know, this is a great uh, tabletop for that. So... Uh, but it, depending on how much time you want to invest, you can do crazy things. You can world build, you can throw in maps, you can uh, throw in your own pictures, all your art artwork, whatever. It's all here. But yes, there's a lot of questions. So really quickly, I just kind of want to get into here. Um, so first of all, you're going to probably create a campaign. And when you hit that button, it's going to load up with a bunch of different uh, rule sets from many different... Uh, table uh, tabletop RPGs. So I'm going with the Pathfinder 2E. So when you hit Create Campaign, you're just gonna hit you know 2E Pathfinder 2E and hit Start Game. Uh, and there's two different ways you can run the game. You can actually run it through the server, through the cloud server. There'll be a little button over there that says Cloud, and I think that's the uh, default in general because they do have a really good server. Uh, and it's and and say something does happen to the server, you can also still use your uh, local LAN uh, IP address where your players can connect to you, and it even gives everything like the information uh, on the page when they're trying to to connect. So you can you can actually do that. So uh, again, not going to get into that detail, uh, how to do LAN or anything like that. I highly suggest just going on to the server, uh, you know, really not that hard. Your players, on the other hand, will hit join campaign. And when you join campaign, uh, they will find your name in the list, you know. So mine would be Aphex, Aphex Colin, and you would definitely see 
me running a game or you know studying or or, or whatnot for the next session um, when I open up my game session, and that's going to happen now. But anyway. Uh, the other thing is there's some settings. One of the first things uh, I like to do with settings is to make sure that I have, uh, you know, my um, my fonts big enough so that I can read everything. I, I wear glasses. I, you know, it's nice to have big things. So, uh, and then again, this at the at the bottom here, this uh, check for updates. Make sure that sometimes it, it glows red when you open it up. That means you, that you definitely have an update. And any time that you buy anything from the store, which is right here, you can go and click that. You'll jump right to the store. Uh, and you'll find modules at the store. And you can buy them. And they instantly throw and program everything, which is for dungeon masters who do not have enough time. That's the way you want to go. Grab the information grab the adventures that you really want uh throw it in here it's it's beautiful everything is is done for but but everything is done for you but once you get it into here uh, or buy it you have to check for updates usually it'll glow red and then you can grab all the uh modules that that you bought from there um and to, not to say that you uh, it, to run a session you definitely need to have a core rule set book so if you do not have a core rule set book, you're not going to be able to run your game efficiently the way that you want it to, unless you're you're willing to sit there and really program out everything, which it, to me is going to take way too too long. So buy the core rule books, get get the the books that you really want, and I buy every every book. Now a really cool thing too, I want to note before we begin this, um, if you have a Paizo account. And you have books or PDFs from Paizo, you can link that up to Fantasy Grounds, and you'll get a discount on all those modules, uh, adventure paths, core rule books, uh, lost omens, whatever that you buy. You have a discount, and it is such a great way to make sure that uh, you can get. All you know, it's just a great way of saving money and a great way of saving so much time getting your all your information right straight into the program. Uh, and that's that's what we're gonna uh, focus on today. Is basically we're gonna have the core rule book. We're gonna have a couple modules. You know, I have a lot of things in here actually because I I run a really big campaign. I call it the open world, and it's literally my players can really go wherever they want. They can make any decision that they want. And I got I got so much information that they can. I literally they live in a world living breathing world but anyway uh let's get into this stuff so depending on how much stuff that you have when you load your campaign especially after you create your campaign you're going to be hitting load campaign and you're going to go to your book uh, or go to your campaign name or whatever so mine's called open world um but you know you might want to put in um, a little timmy's happy time adventure and then you have, you know, everyone can see that, oh, okay, Aphex Colin is running li Little Timmy's Happy Time Adventure, and it's really easy to find, you know. So, bam, they, they click on that, they're getting into your your uh, into your game. It's great. Uh, so, but when you do load your games, uh, load your campaign, you know, hit, you hit your, uh, the name that you, of the campaign that you want, and then you're going to hit start at the bottom here, and... You'll go, you'll go right into your game. Um, not too much other things right here. There's some forums, which is really helpful when you get updates. Uh, really, we'll say that's that's a big one. Release notes, of course. Uh, game systems, basic guides. This, this is kind of how to run uh, Fantasy Grounds in general. Uh, but anyways, we're going to jump right in. So I'm going to... Uh, let's jump in. Now, my campaign takes a little bit longer <laughs> to load up. Um than I think the players in general. Mine will load, take about three minutes to load up. Um, depending on how much stuff that you're cramming into your campaign, and since I have an open world where I want every option available to my players, and I throw in a lot of modules to make sure that they there's always something around the corner or another town they haven't explored, uh, uh, another, uh, another swamp they haven't been to, you know... Uh, I want to make sure I have all the information inside my uh, fantasy ground. So either you can buy the modules or you can program them. Later on, I will teach you how to program, completely make a world build and uh, have some fun with that. Uh, you can make your creatures. You can make your, your uh, characters in this. You can do all kinds of stuff. So it's a really great program for everything. 
All right, so we're inside Fantasy Grounds, and the first thing you're probably noticing is mine looks different from yours. That's okay, and I will teach you how to uh, make uh, or put in cool artwork and kind of make it a little interesting for your players to have some fun with. Uh, but for right now, um, I'm, j like I said, just going to go over the real basics of Fantasy Ground. And... Um, but uh, this is really nice. This, uh, you you can really get some cool pictures in the background here. You have these nice looking, um, uh, uh, what what would you call that? Fonts and and artwork in general. Just just a really nice looking program. Um, and so this kind of area we're not going to be dealing with too much. You're you're going to get a lot of windows popping up in this area. But for a lot of the game this needs to kind of be clear. We're going to be seeing a lot of information popping up into the chat box or the dice box. This is a chat dice box. So you're also going to see some dice underneath it. Yay! This is the core of any TTRPG. Um, so you just kind of, you know, uh, left click and hold and you can get a die. Now if you roll it in the background here, nothing is going to happen really. Socket account. You know, nothing popped up here, but if I roll it inside here in the chat box, it pops up at the 18. You actually, and you can see the 18. It used to be so much worse. Sometimes the physics were <laughs> all over the place with that, that die rolling, but it's really cool because you can see the die right there. You get that four. And everything's looking great. All right, so um, that's how that's how you're gonna be rolling your dice for now. <laughs> There's a lot of different ways to roll the dice, but another interesting thing is we can grab onto the dice again, uh, left clicking and holding, and then I can tap my right mouse button, and I can get multiple dice. I can get a lot of dice right there. All right, that's pretty cool. I I just I rolled 107. That's a that's that's probably a crit somewhere. All right, so then we have all the other dice, of course. Now, another weird thing about the 10 die is that it doesn't, you, you know, you can't just grab two and get a percentile die. You're going to, you know, four plus six is 10. So you're going to have to, you can uh, right-click on any of these uh, die, and you can actually get... You know, you can get multiple. I can get 20 of these right off the bat right there. But the 10 is the special one because, you know, you get the percentile up here. Um, and you can kind of throw it there. Now, I use the die 20 a lot. So because of this, you, you see this bar down here. This is a hockey bar. It's awesome. And we'll get into a lot more advanced. When we get into inva advanced battles, um, we're going to be really using this a lot more. And when we get into uh, uh, building uh, worlds, definitely I'll, I'll show you a lot more about why this is so important at the bottom here. Um, but for right now, um, going back to the die, you know, we kind of use the die 20 a lot. So I kind of throw it down here. You just kind of grab it and then just kind of place it in, into this this bar here. But you can kind of see now two of them, them are there. there. There's two die 20s. I, I don't want two die 20s. So I can right click on number one there and go up to this like death licking symbol, clear the slot and nice. It's, you know, it's gone. So now I can just put one in there. And I did the same thing with the, uh, over here with the percentile die, I go over here and get the percentile, and you can throw it into two, and then I can click this and, you know, get, get those. Or I can hit F1, F2, and, and it's just that easy. I can see here, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. So you get, the, you get the idea. All right, pretty cool. Now, say, uh, I don't know, say we have, um, I don't know, Superman uh, he comes... Uh, becomes one of our party members, and Superman is he's he's super duper, so he's got a plus 50, and we can put that into the modifier, just kind of click, and then uh, right click on it, and then throw in 50, and then I can roll my die 20, and kaka, die 20 plus 50, 61. So the modifier here, this helps a lot when we're trying to really modify um, any of our scores, um, and 
this helps tremendously, but there's a lot of other ways. Again, this is just all the basic uh, information that I'm going to give you on Fantasy Grounds, but there's a lot more happening. But, all right, so that's how we roll dice. And this is kind of how we really get into the heart of understanding where our rolls are going to be. We're going to be looking at this a lot, so we don't want to really... Um, obscure this area with a lot of windows. We're going to be putting a lot of the windows over in here, and I'll explain that a little bit later. So again, hot keys down here, dice, the modifier where we put in, you know, whatever number we want to modify our die, and then we roll our die inside the chat box. Now, let's move on over here. This is pretty important stuff. There's a bunch of gray boxes up here. These gray boxes, we're going to kind of talk talk about here in a minute. Um, probably the most important thing is this side, though. All the red here, all the gray, everything here is very important. But the most important of all is our library down here. And if you have bought the core rulebook, if you have bought a module, you bought the uh, best airy, this is where we're going to find everything. But it's not actually loaded into the game yet. So if you are trying to find monsters and you hit the best area here, you're not going to find them. You know, they're not there yet. So you're probably, the first time you probably run this, you're like, oh gosh, you know, wh why is why is nothing up appearing? Um, that's because we got to go into our library. And our library is going to give us everything that we need so that, or, you know, to run everything that we want. Um, and just to kind of let you know, I think this area here is letting you know what you have running, but you probably ha don't have any of this, so you have to hit your modules. And this is going to kind of pop up, and you're going to see a bunch of uh, a bunch of modules here. Now, you're, at first you're kind of kind of only see so many, and you're, you're like, where is everything else? I can't scroll down. Well, there are pages. Pages and pages <laughs> and you have to remember that there are a lot of pages on everything in red here um and that's how you're going to find things so sometimes we have to go to the next page and we have to continue forth until we find something that we want to load up now when we want to load something it'll actually say load so for instance this agents of edgewater 6 the player's resource it's not loaded we well i definitely want it to be loaded so we hit the load button and as you can see bam the book is now open that means that now anything that I'm trying to find will be up in this information up in there so and and this is really important because you want the core rule book in there um, you want to open that up um, you you want to put anything that is going to be player related that you want to make sure like your your best Aries you know uh, load make sure they say load um, and then you're going to probably see this weird block here, this red, and sometimes it's it's uh, yeah, green. Uh, and that means, it, this just makes it so that players can see certain aspects of what these books uh, entail. And But uh, it's not a big deal for right now, but majority of the time, just leave these red. You, you really don't need to uh, have those... Um, uh, uh, checked right now. So anyways, once we get everything, we have everything opened, I, I, I'm not sure if you're supposed to, yeah, okay. So anyways, you're not supposed to really do anything. As long as you have uh, it loaded, you hit the load and it says unload, then it's already in inside the system. All right, cool. So, all right. So now we kind of know that we have stuff in here. But, again, we're trying to get into a battle. And let's you know, we need a character, we need an enemy, and we need a map. Those are big things. So let's get started with those. All right, well, first thing that we need, character, right? We need a character, and there's a great built-in. You know, I wouldn't necessarily call it a 100% a character builder, but it, it used to be a lot worse. I've been running uh, the Pathfinder 2nd uh, Edition Fantasy Grounds for about a year now, or a little, little bit more than a year, about a year and a half now, and um, 
character creation wasn't easy at the beginning, but now it's literally minutes. I can I can make a character within within minutes, and I'll teach you really quick. So it's it's really not even hard. Uh, but you there will be an advanced character creation day, so I can teach you really how to get into the nitty grittiness uh, to make sure that you can can program the things that that are necessarily, especially if you're a dungeon master that really likes to. T uh, uh, kind of, you know, uh, tinker with the rules and, and change the little things here and there. So uh, we'll get into that another day. But today we're just just going to build a really easy character. And that's exactly what it is at the very top is characters here. Um, and let's kind of smack that button. All right. You're going to see a bunch of my characters from my campaign. Uh, but today we, we want a new character. Um, we, c we can either hit this plus sign at the bottom um, or I can actually right click on the background and I can hit down this down area. I can uh, create an item and you can also clear, uh, uh, well, we'll ex I'll explain this here in a moment, but, um, basically when you're, well, actually I'll explain it now. Basically when your players come into your game, they're going to see their character in here and they have to click on it and you'll, you'll see it says owned by whatever their screen name is and, uh, it, you know, so once once they kind of click on uh, the name or on their character, the name will kind of stick there. Now, say you you you, uh, you know someone's not playing that character and you want someone else to play that character because once they click on it, Mister uh, Mister Doctor here, he's only going to see Heal Marley and no one else will see Heal Marley when they join. You know, he's the only one that own, he owns it now, so he'll see it. No one else will see it. I can still see it because I'm the Dungeon Master, but no one else will see it. Um, so, but say you want some other player to play Mr. D. White, you, you basically are just going to, well, I'm going to do it on my character. Uh, you basically just right-click on it and you're going to hit Clear Owner. It's just that simple uh, and then I can right click it and I can say take ownership as myself so that way no one else can see it because it's mine as the dungeon master um, so that's kind of in, important to know but we're gonna make a character really quick you know go to the create item down here and there should be some new I don't know it's at the top now because they just started putting these in alphabetical order which is awesome by the way so yeah it looks like it's at the very top we're gonna click on it, uh, left click on it, and you're going to get two things that kind of open up. This is the main character sheet for Fantasy Grounds, okay? This is what the players are going to be using all the time, and you as a Dungeon Master are going to be using all the time too, because you're going to be making sure that your players are actually playing the game correctly, not trying to cheat, and not trying to swindle, you know, out of the excitement of the fate of the die, and that's what we're all about. Um, as Dungeon Masters, we want to make sure the fate of the die is secured and the gods hold those numbers, not the players, okay, uh, other than what they choose. So, we're going to make a new character real quick, and you're going to see that this is blank, there's nothing there, but over here, this is where everything where we're going to be uh, making. So, this is how we make the character down here. Um, right in this area you're going to see a lot of information kind of pop up as we continue to build the character. Oh, um, and that's cool because we need to read some of that. It will remind you about a lot of things, and I'll kind of show you a little bit, but we're not going to get too too much into that later. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so right now we're going to hit Ancestry, and be honest, um, I'm all about the Shuni right now. So let's, let's get the Shuni, and then let's see. Oh, I get to select a Heritage, so... Uh, Let's just do a paddler. Uh, I guess strength and intelligence. Uh, or no, I can't. I, I can only have one apparently. So that button. Oh, background. Let's make them a. Uh, sometimes this this will happen. It's there's like little lags here and there. The game is saving. I I'm assuming, or your your game is being saved. So I don't know. Let's just make a a quick uh, guard. There we go. He used to be a guard, so he's got a lot of strength. Uh, and he's all about legal lore. You know, and he's going to have, I guess, dexterity. So, okay, and then class. Just grab a class. Make a, um, make a druid. You know, and then make a, I guess, storm order druid. Uh, 
and then you hit hit this button right here. Again, you're just hitting buttons until you know, I get four ability boosts. I'm kind of cool with with that. And you're gonna get see all these numbers starting appearing over here. Do you do you want to add the default class equipment kit? Now this is new and this is really cool because if you do hit the check mark, it won't subtract any money from um, the class I, I, uh, from the 150 gold pieces, or I'm, I'm sorry, silver pieces or, or 15 gold pieces that the player starts with. Um, you will get a set of of a bunch of good stuff, and so really, this is the majority of the time this is good, but it's not always good. It just depends. I've <laughs> it depends on the. Uh, uh, the the weapons they give you and things like that. Most of the time it's great though. Most of the time you, you get get what you want. See, optionally choose items from the list. I can get healers tools if I want to at this point. You can choose as many as you can afford. So apparently I might be buying this, but I'm not really sure. So I hit that. And now I've done everything for my class, but it might tell me a couple other things down here. And I know that like uh for instance, um See right here, it says some features of the class storm order may require manual additioning or editing. So, you know, there's there's certain things like that. Uh, trained, it's telling me what I'm trained in. Right here, it says train in a total of two skills. Add one more t uh, train skill if you increase your intelligence. Yeah, intelligence. Yeah, we get that. So it's uh, two plus uh, add one more train skill. Yeah. Uh, so there's a couple things going on here. We got all of our cool stuff uh, going, but you know, like again, again, I'm not really getting into character creation too much. But you can go in here to skills, and these tabs are really important. But okay, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But in here, this is everything to level up. When your player levels up, you're gonna hit this add level up button. So much easier. And anytime you want to add a skill, like a class feat, it's right here, or a dedication feat, or a, you know, skill feat, general feat, ancestry feat, it's all right here. This is where we, so, you know, if I, because now I'm a Shuni, I'm a Steam Visor, and now it went in here, and it's in here. So it's now on my character sheet, which is really important. And this is the main sheet. You're going to see these tabs. Again, want to mention these tabs. Tabs are very important there. Uh, but we're on the main sheet, and this is considered the tracker. So if I close that and I hit this button right here, tracker, you can see I get everything that I need to level up a character. Now there are other ways, and I'll show you some other other ways to kind of bypass that. If, like, say you made your own class, uh, or if you're using a third-party class or something that is not in your module, we can do that later on with advanced uh, character creation when I make that video. Uh, but for right now, we need a picture. That's so important, right? So I go to assets, um, and all the a lot of the pictures like that that are here. Um, you can just look it up. This is where most of the pictures are. And there's tokens, portraits, images, and all. Um, but tokens is what we want. We want a nice-looking shuni. Let's let's make this cute guy right here. He's he's a cute-looking shuni, right? That one's good too. I like I like that one uh, to kind of look like my druid, I guess. Uh, well, I don't know. It's kind of a druid. Uh, and so now we have our our main, and we can put his name. We can make him um, uh, uh, two teeth Timmy. Uh, yeah, so he, he's Two Teeth Timmy. He's a great shuni druid. He's a guard. You know, he's got all the cool stuff. You can. And another cool thing about this program, um, say say you're kind of curious what the shuni is. You can actually click on this little. Uh, so, sometimes it's like a red dot. Sometimes it's a little uh, icon. This is like a box with a little dragon in it. That's the icon now. And so you can really see it shows you all the stuff again. Here's the shuni, and then again the tabs. The tabs on the side, and you can see all the cool stuff. And again, more and more stuff that is telling us about what is going on with the shuni. And anyways, so here's our front page, and this is where we take initiative. This is where we see our AC. This is where we see our main stats. You know, my strength is a plus three, plus three dexterity. It's it's an okay shuni. And um, here are all my saves. And again, we'll get into character creation later on. There's a combat tab. There's the skills tab, which is important because we, we want to be trained in. I, I think my intelligence went up by, like, none. So I get two skills. So I'm, I guess, athletics and... Uh, 
religion. Cool. So there we go. Um, and then probably something I get for my storm thing would probably be nature more than likely. Um, and it, it, that might have been added. And again, I'm going to teach you that later on when we go to the tracker and read some of the stuff down in here for the advanced uh, stuff. But anyways, we pretty much have our character. And it, the abilities tab here just kind of shows everything that the, that it has. Uh, and, and uh, you know, so if you really want to know it's anathema, you can really get just that little square right there, read everything right here, and your players can see all of that too, right on their character sheet. Just as simple as that. And go to inventory, and look at all that. That's all the stuff that it added for us. It's really nice. And another cool new thing that they, they put is this location. You can add things to your backpack. So, you know, this, this holds four bulk of of equipment so I can now throw it into my backpack and it won't affect my total bulk here at the bottom um, now one thing a lot of a lot of players get mixed up is the PC uh, items total value and the treasure here this is how much they have in items this is how much they actually have in you know silver gold pieces which is really important for them to understand and there's this little box for other th cool things and you can actually put in other neat little other things there too um but that's really important and again we'll get into more more things later on here's notes this is really important for the character because there's a lot of things that we're going to fill out but right now we're not going to worry about that and here's our actions tab which is the most important of all but all right so we have our character and we get we understand okay so we have uh two teeth timmy here oh yeah wait okay we gotta make sure this token is the same as his portrait That's right yeah there we go there we go two teeth timmy and we're gonna you know it's owned by me right okay so we got our character which is incredibly important now we need a map that's what we really need if we're gonna have a battle we need a map um and to get a map, we're going to go to Images. Now, hopefully you've got a couple modules or whatever, and um, if you have a couple modules or you can buy some maps, I'll show you how to throw in maps later on. Um, you can program an entire um, module yourself if you really wanted to in this program. It's a great program, uh, but it's good, very time-consuming. It's incredibly... I'll, I'll teach you eventually, but it's incredibly time-consuming. But... Uh, but but worthwhile if you don't want to really spend the money and the program allows you you know this is freedom this really gives the dungeon master a lot of freedom and that that's what I like about it uh, so anyway let's say like we want to do a I don't know um, something let's do like a agents of Edgewater five and there should be a map in here somewhere um there we go there's GM maps. And eventually, I think there's player maps. A map, yeah, like map of the black whale. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty cool. So, so basically, images is the same thing as everything else. There's there's pages. You know, you have to kind of go between those, and then you find in your group what module you're looking for. That if you have a ton of modules, they'll be up in here. And that's what you're going for. So, uh, you know, and later on you can do some really cool stuff. Like, uh, I have some neat stuff in here. I think, where was it? Uh, yeah, here's a kind of a cool, cool map. This is a nice Orcus Christmas. I have some snow in the background. That's kind of cool. Um, but that's that's just something that I can I can you know kind of make in my spare time. And right now, I'm not too worried about that. I just want to have a nice-looking map um, that I've played a lot before. So let's let's go to all. And let's bust out this my mountain path. This is this was part of a Christmas adventure I was doing, and you know I'm gonna get rid of these. Yes, those are kind of sitting there. Anyways, so when you get a map out, you're going to see that it has the map name. If you don't want people to know the map name, just hit this identity button. You can do this again with your creatures, too. Um, 
but you know hit that button make sure they don't know what this is called and this right here is what it will be called but you you could say like um you, you could name this like i don't know or you know you you will not know this map name you know and that's what they'll see it as so it's kind of funny uh and i can do that now you probably noticed i had to open up this lock which is really important this will be on a lot of different items but i open it and this makes it so I can actually edit pretty much everything in here. And this is a fail safe just in case if you're doing some, you know, a lot of work and you're, uh, you don't want to accidentally delete things, you know, because things happen. Life is strange, right? So we want to, if we want to edit it, you kind of open this, uh, that up. But we'll, we'll get into that a whole, whole another day. But anyways, we want to hit this button up here. Well, oh, I should explain this. The easiest way, in my opinion, to share a map on the fly is to make sure that it is in window mode like this, in the small window mode. Then you're going to right click and you're going to go to the left and it's going to say sharing. You hit the sharing button once and then you go off to the right and hit share record twice. Now this makes it so that the map has now become public. Um, you could do this when no one is actually in here and... Um, players can still get to this map and find it inside the images. When they get into the program, they will actually have this map uploaded into that area for them. So kind of a cool deal if, if uh, you want to give them a lot of maps with, that you're using a lot. But in general, anything that you're going to share, it's, they're going to be able to see it. Um, and we'll get into maps and, and cool things later on. But for now, what we want to do is hit this uh, arrow that's kind of pointing up after we kind of share the map. So... Boop, kind of do that. All right, so we got these other things open. Let's close those. We don't we need that. And I'm using my mouse wheel here, and I can zoom in and out. And this is the easiest other way if you're trying to get to a specific point. Zoom out, and then zoom back into the area you want to get to. Um, if you don't want to do that, just click and hold your mouse wheel down and move the map around. If you do not have a mouse wheel, you can also hit this button in the bottom right hand corner, click and hold with your left uh, mouse button, and you kind of walk around, just kind of use your mouse to kind of get around the map. Now, again, I don't like to use that this very often. I like to use my mouse wheel. That's kind of how I like to do it, but it's not that hard to really zoom in, zoom out, you know, get to a different area. Uh, very often, but uh, and you're probably seeing these. I'm I'm just gonna get rid of these real quick. So, Oop. all right. So this was kind of a map I made a long time ago. But let's say we want like, uh, well, let's go to the best area, and say we want an evil snowman. Let's see, we got any, yeah, we got an evil snowman. Okay. Oh yeah. So I can do this. I can grab it, and these the right here. The red, um, and, and sometimes they're dots, um, and sometimes uh, they're symbols, and the, and that's the symbol right there. But you're going to be like, oh, I'm, I'm going to grab this symbol and pull it down. And you can pull that symbol anywhere. Again, I can take this and I can throw it down right here into number nine, and then I can hit number nine, and it pops up the uh, everything that I want to know about that that snowman, so uh, that the hockey there. Uh, but we're not trying again gonna get into that a lot later on so we want to get that snowman into battle along with the character and what we're gonna have to do is go up to this area and this is the most important button of all the combat tracker the combat tracker is everything for running battles and making sure your HP and your stats and everything start doing everything automatic and do all the, the cool stuff that we want, right? Uh, and that's important. Now, I am throwing a lot of information at you, and I know sometimes it can be a little overwhelming, but pretty much just remember that this is the most important thing for battling. Uh, and that's, we need this. We need the combat tracker. Now, when your players get into the game, they're going to have portraits up into this corner. And so I highly suggest putting the combat tracker just up above it, uh, or just right below that, and just a little bit above, uh, the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the die or chat box here. 
and this is really important because I can see all my information here and here really easily and I don't really have to look around the screen at anything else <clears throat> and I can get a lot of my information uh, from from these two things so combat tracker is important because one we go to the characters and say we want uh, one of our players to be in a battle well we want two teeth Timmy in there so put two teeth Timmy on there just click and drag for the most part uh, left click and you're gonna see two, two teeth Timmy now one big mistake a lot of people do is they try to grab the token and throw it down from here look it just disappears it doesn't do anything or say I open it up and I grab the token here and I throw it down I know that, that's not that's not doing it yeah so you can't throw anything out onto the field until we have it in the combat tracker very important because the numbers won't compute otherwise and that's why it's not going out there so once we get two teeth Tim timmy in there we have the uh this this guy right here we can take the portrait or the token just kind of click on it left click drag out here and we're gonna put two teeth timmy right there right on that nice spot there in this crazy blizzard of a map oh my so much happening in the background there with all the winter you can make it even crazier too uh, uh that's that's just out part of it uh anyway we got two teeth timmy but we need an adversary we need something again we could have that evil snowman in there um and say we uh, say we do want that evil snowman in there why not it's a level eight but who cares let's let's throw in an evil snowman um and, and see how things happen now one thing that's going to happen is you're going to see this eye icon and you're going to kind of see it like half there half not there that means right now if i throw this token onto the field you're not going to oh this guy's kind of big you're not going to see um there are the, the players are not going to see the token okay so if i kind of click and this is another kind of interesting thing when you click on the tokens you can kind of see them and they're highlighted and you're going to see the map and later on i'll show you more about the map and things things are highlighted and whatnot but if you re-click on it it'll kind of go back to its natural state so you can kind of see and you can like right now you can definitely see the snowman is very invisible to two teeth timmy so if you want to make invisible characters this is how you do it or if you're you know say he's hiding in the snow and technically two teeth timmy with his perception check and we just go to skills and you're going to see these little you know the total here and you'll see these little uh yellow yellow wishy kind of uh die twenties at the bottom left there and so i don't know does my perception see him let's see Oh, an 18. I'm not really sure. He's got some natural camouflage. It is kind of snowing. I don't think Two Teeth Timmy is seeing him. So he's walking up. And again, if you click on him, you know, you yeah, you're going to definitely see the other, other character. But you know, that's not the truth of what really is being shown on everyone's screen, right? So we want to remember that. And again, you're going to have some hiccups here and there, but it's not a dire, nothing dire. Um, So... I finally get up to him and say I, as the dungeon master, he's kind of moving up, and then finally, boop, I make him appear. Oh no, two teeth, Timmy, you've been caught surprised. So you're gonna notice there's red in here. That's an enemy. Green in here. That is a good guy or an ally. And then yellow here at the bottom is neutral. Um, and you can you can assign this. So if I really wanted the snowman to be a nice guy, I can do that. But and we'll get into advanced combat later on, and we'll we'll do all that. But anyways, we want the snowman to battle. So we're gonna click on the little storm icon. And there's a lot of different ways to do this, but this this is a little easier for now for the beginners because you can see all your information. You know, when you click on the icon here, here's all the stats you need to know. But you can kind of scroll over some of these areas, and you're definitely going to see uh, they highlight. And so I want my carrot missile to come out, and, you know, I guess my nose just, I guess, has a rocket launcher on it somehow. Kind of 
comes out and then smacks the shuni in his face. So yeah, I got a critical. Oh, the, well, the shuni's probably dead. When I, you know, take a damage with the you know, right here. Here's the damage I, again. When I attack, uh, you probably saw me just grab it and drop on two teeth, Timmy. All right, or I can drag and drop on two teeth, Timmy here, or I can do the same thing if the uh, portrait is up in here when you start getting players. So that's how you attack. Just right uh, or left click and just kind of drag and drop on an area that's either the, the token, the uh, combat tracker, or the uh, portrait at the top. I guess, yeah, uh, two teeth Timmy is he's getting his ass handed to him. So, uh, but then we just do the same thing with the damage. Grab it. Oh, there goes that. <laughs> Grab it. And gonna drop it on two teeth, Timmy. And it does the critical automatically for you, because you can see the critical. It does the double dice, and you can see the green numbers here are the extra die that are being uh thrown down for the uh for for the critical. Uh oh no, two teeth, Timmy, you're dead. And you're gonna see like there's there's the health. This is current health. And uh, this is how much it says. This is like what they they call it wounded or wounds. Um, so th this is just how much HP they lost uh, on that side. But you know, uh, Saren Ray you know, loves this Shuni, and uh, she sees that the Shuni is in trouble and uh, grants a wish to bring the Shuni back to life. So I just put zero into here, or you know, I, and I can put like one, uh, seven. Um, zero. Uh, but you, you. I don't think you can really put any numbers. So I don't know if it's six. I put fourteen back in there now. So when you, this is the one you're going to be dealing with the most is the wounded and temp temporary HP. You, this is the total HP. You can't do anything with that. And this is the initiative. So oh, and I didn't even show you initiative. Uh, the Shuni. Um, you can you can either hit this button right here or I can double click I can actually double click on, on both of these things and open up their, their sheets but uh, say I want the shuni to take initiative you go to main and we're, we just double click on perception or I can click and drag and you can do that with anything that has that little yellow uh, uh, die 20 there so I can just click and drag Click and drag, or I can, you know, double click, double click, or I can throw it down into the hot bar and just blah, 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 just hit a bunch of buttons. Things, things happen. All right, so, uh, and, and on the character sheet, you're going to see, like, it, it corresponds with what is happening, which is really important. We want to make sure that that's, that's happening. So, all right, so we're almost done here. Because uh, I'm really not getting into... I'm just getting into very basic detail. Just enough to get you into the game and really understand how to play the basics. Uh, probably on the next uh, video I make, I'm going to go over uh, character creation and uh, hardcore... Well, you know what? I'm gonna, I'll probably do battle first, to be honest. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be doing advanced battling, and advanced battling is going to teach you a lot of all the little stuff that makes life a lot easier <laughs> in advanced combat uh but anyways uh so i showed you how i can heal easily uh two teeth timmy with the plus uh say uh you know saren ray we i know he, you know he has 14 health i'm going to give him 14 health back because saren ray loves him uh, or, or maybe favors him in some way. She's seen the future and sees that he's going to be a hero someday. Uh, so teeth, Two Teeth Timmy uh, needs to make an attack. And so the best way on the character sheet is to go to the Actions tab here. So we kind of open up the character sheet, click the Actions tab, and we're going to see here's our attacks and some other things. Uh, here's a kind of a, a spell. But right now we just want to kind of use... And I'll teach spells in the next, uh, in the advanced combat. Right now, I just want to get into to, uh, really quick things. But spells are a little bit more difficult, um, and you kind of have to hit this display down here, which is really important because you're th these are the actions for the spells compared to the summary. 
Um, and if I really want to use this spell, especially on something, I have to hit make sure display says actions, okay? And then I can roll my, my grab and roll on top and I can do my damage and I can, you know, if, uh, oh, that does clumsy too, so I can throw my clumsy two on him. Um, so that, that's clicking and dragging those. But, you know, I'm just, I'm a shooty that's kind of, you know, just a poor boy. And I, I, you know, in a poor world, I want to use my long spear. So uh, you can see that the plus six, plus one, negative four, this is with the uh, multiple penalties, multiple attack penalties are already kind of added in here with everything. And you can see a lot of this stuff is automated. But, you know, as a dungeon master, I highly suggest you learn at one point to make sure that you don't rely on the automation because it's going to mess with you at one point. It's going to fuck shit up. <laughs> I'm going to guarantee it at one point. There's just going to be some mishap and something happens. And, and it happens all the time. But as a dungeon master, your job is to make sure that you can really remedy it as quickly as possible to keep the game flowing. Um, and that's that's kind of why we're using the virtual tabletop is to really make sure that game time flow is really constant and fun and engaging. So anyways, I want to hit with my long spear. So I'm going to grab the plus six and drop it on the evil snowman. Ooh, I got a nat 20. Bew, bew, bew. So, ah, uh, that's perfect because now you can see I actually hit with a nat 20 and I'm going to take my long uh, spear damage, which is right in here underneath the damage and just want to grab that and click and drag right on top of the snowman does nine damage and so you tell your players that's pretty much how they're going to be playing they're going to grab their attack they're going to try to attack you know all oh, they missed oh wow another nat 20 hey that's pretty neat uh let's, let's throw that on that's not every day that that happens Woo! all right so cool and then say they they attack again they get the plus one now they, they attack and you can see everything in here it kind of is great because you can see all right wait did i just Really get another nat 20. <laughs> uh, am I rigging this? No, I am not. I am not kidding you. I just got a nat 20 three times in a row, and that is incredibly rare. All right, negative four. Let's throw that in there. If I get a nat 20, okay, I was going to say, I get a nat 20 on, I, I should have been DMing tonight. So anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. So you can see that I did the damage, and when I do the attack, especially with the plus four, you can even see it says negative four, or it says the, the uh, plus one up here. This is the plus three with the damage. Uh, it has everything in there, and it's even telling you that I dealt uh, zero damage to the, uh, you know, if there's some sort of resistance, uh, instead of doing four damage, I actually did zero damage right next to the blood drop, and here's the actual attack score, so, you know, even though I got an at 20, it still is going to tell you I got a 21, so that still was a crit, apparently, with uh, with this thing, uh, maybe, no, no, actually, it doesn't show the green, so, so if you're using the actual rules, um, you have to still... I mean, a 20 is a hit still, but it's not critical. Um, so, uh, pretty cool stuff, right? Uh, that's really where I want to get to, is just how to do a back and forth, really easy stuff. Saw kind of how a spell works. Um, i kind of explain it one more time. You get to the Tempest Surge. I grab the die. This is a save, though. When I throw a save on top of a character... Um, it's going to be a little different. I have to remember that the evil snowman is taking a save, and that's important. So the evil snowman took a save. It was a 36. It'll say save reflex. Um, normally, it should say the DC. I think that's the uh, the DC is usually in here. Not always, but sometimes, uh, depending on what you're hitting. And, or I think, like, for most... Uh, Ah, depends on what you're hitting. Anyways, it says no damage, but say I want to deal deal damage. I, I grab this and throw it on top and say, oh, he actually is clumsy too now. I grab the uh, little dude there, I guess is the best way to put it, or human figuroid? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I throw that on top of them. And now you can see that the Tempest Surge made him have clumsy too on him. 
and you can see all your information. So that's the that's the fastest way I can explain how to really get into this program and make it so that you can start battling and getting it. But you're going to find that you're going to get like as as many questions that were answered right now, you're going to get about 20,000 more <laughs> that are not answered, but you got all the basics right now. And and so that's the most important thing. We got the basics down. We understand basically how to get in into the pro program, how to roll dice, to make sure that the dice, this area is, is very uh, important that we look at all of our mission information here to bring out our combat tracker everything has to be through the combat tracker our dice are in the bottom here we have to make sure that we if our modules we bought modules we have to load them up through the library and that is going to be uh, probably the most important things of all for right now and then we'll get into some advanced uh, prob probably the next thing we'll get into is the advanced usage of Fantasy Grounds and advanced combat. And that probably will be a little bit longer than this. Um, but thank you so much for watching this tutorial. This is uh, something I'm, I'm passionate about in general, just playing the game. But I really felt that a lot of Dungeon Masters out there might want just a really nice little easy tutorial. And I'll make a couple more, you know, for... To, to really get into the nitty grittiness of what you can really do with Fantasy Grounds. I mean, there's automations now. There's so many little cool things. Um, and what's great still is you can still use Theater of the Mind if you're an old school player. And, you know, you can you can go real bare basic. And I still do that. I still go real bare basic at times. But then I get really into, you know, creating something that feels new and different. You know, like a cool map like this um, with snow piles and snow falling and everything. But anyways... Really just want to make sure that it's an easy way for you guys to get started in Fantasy Grounds. And I hope this was educational and uh, helpful. And leave comments if you want. Um, I'll try to get to answering them. I'm, I'm all over the place half the time, though, so I can't guarantee anything. But eventually I will get out and try to make more videos uh, to make sure that you can understand more of the craziness that's behind all of fantasy grounds and i mean it's 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 a beautiful place <laughs> so yeah uh, don't miss out on it all right anyways this is apex colin and thank you so much for watching and if you liked this video you yada 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 anyways take care guys have a good night peace